Today, we're going to finish up the e-waste gaming PC with some hard tubing. Stay tuned. This thing looks great. So we're finally finishing up the water cooling on the e-waste gaming PC. Last week, we went ahead and installed all of the components themselves. And then this week, we're actually doing the hard tubing. And what I'm gonna do today is actually show you how to bend hard tubing so you can actually do something like this yourself with your system. The good thing about being able to bend hard tubing is that you can lay out your system any way you want. You don't have to necessarily copy my layout, however, I think it came out pretty good. But with my layout, I've got two bends on two tubes and I've got no bends on one. I've got a straight tube that comes down from the radiator into the pump and then I've got two tubes, one that comes out of the pump over to the CPU block and then another one that goes from the CPU block into the radiator. And I actually really like the layout. It came out really good and it really wasn't that hard to bend. So I'm gonna actually show you how to do it and we're gonna go ahead and bend this tube right here in real time so you can kind of see the entire process. I see a lot of videos that show how to bend hard tubing and they always speed this portion up because, you know, it does take some time. But I'm gonna film it in real time so you can see exactly how long it takes and then you can copy what I do in order to hopefully come up with your own hard tubing bends that look as good as these ones. So let's get to bending this. So the process of bending hard tubing is actually pretty simple. You're just gonna need some tools. The most important tool is gonna be this little rubber insert right here. You wanna make sure to get a rubber insert that's the same size as the tubing that you're gonna be using. It should actually fit in it fairly tight. And that's actually the point. You want this thing to fit into the tube tight because this rubber insert is what actually holds the shape of the tube when you bend it. If you bend it without this rubber insert, then what ends up happening is you you end up crimping the line and it's not going to be any good for flowing water through it. So to use this tube, what you do is make sure you have a bowl of soapy water so you can actually get this thing really slick so it'll fit into the tubing. And essentially all you do is just run it through the soapy water just like this and make sure you get it really coated with water. And this will actually help you out while you're bending the tubing and I'll show you how in a minute. So once you get this thing real good and wet, go ahead and have a towel with you so you can dry your hands off because Honestly, you don't want your hands to be a mess while you're doing this either. So go ahead and slide this tubing, or insert rather, into the tubing. And you wanna make sure that you leave some of the insert hanging out because you're actually gonna to have to pull this out of the tube at some point. You don't want it to get stuck in the tube. And once it's inside of the tube, then we can start preheating our heat gun so we can actually bend it. So with our heat gun in place, what I would recommend doing is turning it on low and having it on low will just kind of take longer to heat the tube up, but hopefully it'll come up with some better results. And then essentially all you do is you just hold the tubing over the heat gun until it gets soft. And as you're gonna see from this, it is gonna take a little while to do this. And you just gotta be patient. And as you're moving it, go ahead and move it back and forth also. You don't wanna concentrate on one spot. You wanna make sure to get a really wide area heated up so that way, once we do the bend, it's not gonna you know, crimp in any area weirdly. And what I like to do is when you're doing multiple bends, sometimes it's hard to mark the tubing. And what I've found that helps a lot is this is where the soapy water comes in. You'll notice that the soap inside of the tube actually kind of makes its own little unique shapes as you're <laughs> setting everything up. And if you concentrate the heat on a specific area, then it kind of helps you mark the tubing without actually marking the tubing. So hopefully that little tip can actually come in handy. Another thing you wanna make sure of is make sure to hold the pipe at a good distance from the end of the nozzle. You don't want it to get it too close and you don't want it too far away either. It's gonna depend on your heat gun actually. My heat gun, I've noticed I gotta hold it about an inch when it's on low for it to get hot enough to be able to bend the tubing. But I've seen heat guns that are hot enough to where you have to hold it like four inches away. So you're gonna to have to judge based on the heat gun that you use. And the most important thing about this is it's just gonna take patience. You have to be patient while you're waiting for the tube itself to heat up. And that's it, just be patient and heat it up. 
And then as you're going, you're gonna notice that the tube is gonna start getting soft over time and you'll see that the water inside is actually gonna start bubbling like mine is now. So I'm actually getting um, some of the soapy water is actually kind of bubbling away and the tube is actually starting to get really soft. You can actually start to kind of see it bend. I don't know if you can make that out on camera, but it is actually starting to get a little bit of bend in it. And once that happens, you'll notice it'll start to get easier and easier for you to be able to move the tube around. And once that starts happening, you wanna make sure that once you make the bend, the outside of the bend is actually gonna be need, need to be heated up more than the inside of the bend because it's the one that has to stretch the furthest. So once you get it to the point to where you're just about ready to start bending, make sure to concentrate some heat on the back of the bend. And what you don't wanna do is you wanna make sure that you don't actually force the tube. If it takes too much pressure to be able to move it, then it's not heated up enough. But you wanna make sure not to heat it up too much too, so you want it just at the right point. So this is getting just soft enough now to where I think it's getting there. So I'm gonna heat the back up as I'm bending this over and you'll see that it actually bends really easy. And there we go, we're in a 90 degree now. And then take it out of the heat and make sure to hold it. And it's gonna take at least a minute to hold it so it'll actually retain its shape. What you don't wanna do at this point is you don't wanna drop it down back into the water. Because we're using acrylic tubing right now, the acrylic can actually crack if it gets in contact with water and it's too hot but it is okay to blow on it. And then as it sits there, you'll notice it'll, it'll start to get a little harder. Right now it's still a little bit soft. I'm gonna go ahead and turn my heat gun off and just kind of hold it in the shape that you want it to be in for a period of time so it can actually cool down. And it is really hot to the touch. You wanna be a little careful while you're using this because heat guns can hurt you, trust me. <laughs> and if you need to, if you think you need to, you can wear gloves while you're doing this, but I don't personally, but it isn't a bad idea because heat guns get extremely hot and the acrylic is actually extremely hot too. It has to be, it has to be hot to bend. And you know, we're starting to get pretty hard now. And as you can see, we have a really clean little 90 degree bend there. So what we're gonna do now is we're actually gonna pull the tubing out. And to do that, what you wanna do is you actually want to spin the tubing as you're pulling it out. And it'll help it kind of break free from the inside of the tube. And sometimes it can be a little bit difficult. And there we go. We have a perfect 90 degree bend in this tubing. However, this, 90 degree bend may not be useful because one side may be longer than the other. So at this point, we need to actually be able to cut the tubing. And to do that, we're gonna use some of the tools that came with the Corsair tube bending kit, mainly the vise and the hacksaw. And you're gonna to wanna to cut this with a hacksaw because unfortunately with acrylic, you don't wanna cut acrylic with a tubing cutter because you actually can shatter it. And then you have to start all over again and we don't wanna do that. So what we have to do is we take this and we have to measure out what we're actually gonna do with it. So you have to find the link that you're gonna use. So in this case, for with this system, what I used is a simple ruler and you can actually measure out where you want something to go to and you kinda use whatever tools you have at your disposal, even if you need to use like another scrap piece of tubing to stick into the system to kinda help you measure everything out. Once you determine where you need to cut it at, then that's where you actually get the tubing cutter out and start to cut away. And to do that, we're gonna go ahead and unscrew these little screws that hold the tube in. And this vise right here is actually set up for two different size tubings. You can use 12 millimeter and 14 millimeter. We're using 14, so obviously we're gonna to go to the bigger end and we're gonna go ahead and slide the tube into the vise and then screw these little screws back in here to help clamp it down. And in some cases, like when I was doing this loop 
earlier, I actually could not screw the second screw in because the tube I was cutting was actually shorter than where the screws are. And it seemed to work out pretty good, so it should be okay for you to be able to do it that way. Now that you have it in the vise, now we can actually go to cut it. And to cut it, there's another tip that I should show you right here that's really important. When you go to cut, don't just line your hacksaw up straight with the tubing, because what'll happen is your hacksaw will tend to kind of drift away from where the cut is gonna make, and then when you're done, your tubing is actually gonna be cut at an angle, and it's not gonna fit properly into your fitting. So what I would do is I would cut in a kind of an inward motion. So if the vise is here, instead of having it straight, you wanna slide it over slightly. So when you're cutting it in, you're cutting it towards the vise. And you're gonna score up the vise a little bit while you're doing this, but the tube is gonna come out a lot better. So let me show you how to do that. We're gonna go ahead and sit it at an angle just like this, and then we're gonna cut away. And just make sure to go ahead and keep it at this angle as you're cutting through the tube. And the, let the vise actually guide the blade through the tube. The only reason you're holding the hacksaw at this angle is just to make sure that it does guide it properly. And the way this vise is actually set up is there's a little lip on it, so once you get to the bottom of the tube, it's not gonna mess up, there you go. It's not actually gonna mess up your desk. It's gonna hit this little ledge on the bottom right here. So your desk is unscorned. But once you do that, we're gonna go ahead and take these screws out and then pull the tube out. And then once you get the tube out, you can see that that's actually a pretty clean cut. So the next thing that we're gonna to wanna to do to this tube is we're gonna actually want to deburr it because you don't wanna stick this into a fitting with the burrs on it right after it was cut. So what you do is you're using this deburrer tool, it has one blade that goes to the inside of the tube and another blade that goes to the outside of the tube. And essentially all you do is you put your tube in there and you just turn it and it should cut a kind of an angle into the tube and make it so it's not sharp on the o-ring because what'll happen is if you try to actually stick this tube into a fitting without deburring it you can end up scratching the o-ring and causing a leak in your system and we definitely don't want leaks in our system that's for sure and then once it's all deburred we should be able to clean it up and install it into our computer and the way you clean that out is go back to your soapy water and just dip the tube in and then just kind of catch some water in the tube and then go just like that. Go ahead and just flow the water out. You can do it on both sides if you want. Just to kind of get it really good and flushed out because you don't want these acrylic shards to actually go through your system. That, that would be a really bad thing. <laughs> so once you get it cleaned out, go ahead and grab your towel and we're gonna wipe down the tube so we don't make a mess here. And while you're working around your heat gun, remember that the tip on your heat gun is gonna remain hot after you use it. So even though we've had it turned off for quite a while now, it's still actually pretty toasty. So you wanna make sure that you don't hit your arm on it and get yourself a burn. So once you get that, you still have some soap inside of here, just blow it out. <sighs> And at that point, you should be pretty close to actually installing this tube. And then if you need to make another bend, it gets a little bit more complicated at that point. The next time you make a bend, you wanna make sure to measure out where the second bend is gonna be, and it can actually get kinda of difficult, but acrylic is extremely forgiving if you're really slow and you take your time. For instance, with this top tube right here, I actually bent it way far out further than it was supposed to be, and I straightened it back out and bent it a second time, and it actually came out pretty good. It's not perfect. In fact, it's one of the bends that I will probably redo at some point, but it looks pretty good, especially on camera. Another thing that I wanna add is that this kit comes with this little template that you can use that you can kinda of help you to make your bends if you wanted to. And what you do is you just take these little rubber spots out and you can fit the tube inside of this in order to make your actual bends. And I did one of my bends with this originally, and honestly, it sucks. I, I hate it. So <laughs> the rest of the bends I all did by hand. And honestly, I, I don't think you need to have a system like this in order to make a nice bend. You can make a clean bend without having to have a tool to do that. You can just bend it by hand and it comes out pretty good. It might not be exactly perfect, but you know, that looks pretty perfect to me. I got a little confession to make also. 
This hard tubing, this is the first time I've ever bent hard tubing. And when I got into this, I was actually a little bit nervous because, you know, it looks really hard. However, once I got to actually bending the tubes, it's really not that bad. It's actually really easy. And I now have actually a lot of confidence that I don't really have to worry about it next time I go to do this. In fact, the hard tubing that came with this system, they gave you six tubes. So obviously if you make any mistakes, you have some extras left over. I create, I bent three tubes for this, not counting the one that I used for the example for this video. And I still have three tubes left. That means I did this without making any mistakes on my first try. And you know, I thought I was gonna make a lot of mistakes. In fact, I thought I was gonna make enough to where I actually bought an entire other kit of hard tubing just in case I needed it. But looks like I didn't need it. And the bends actually came out pretty good. So you know, I would definitely take on hard tubing. It's not as hard as you think it is. It's actually pretty easy. So now that we went through all this work, let's do a B-roll. It's kind of a payday for this system. If this was helpful to you, then please like this video and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that bell icon so you can be notified of future videos. I post a new video every week. And hey, before you go, check out a couple of these videos. Have a great day.